Hey guys, so this video is on classifying chemical reactions. I guess the first thing um, I'd like to get across is that there's more than one way to, well, many ways to classify chemical reactions. Um, doesn't mean, and they're not mutually exclusive. What, what that means is there are a lot of chemical reactions where, that can be classified in more than one way. And these are just some of the basic ways that we can um, classify them. The main reason that we are learning how to classify chemical reactions this way is that once we learn how to classify a chemical reaction, which we can do by looking, usually, usually by looking at what the reactants are, sometimes it helps us predict what the products will be. So that, then, then we can write down a balanced chemical equation. So the first category are called combination reactions. Um, these are chemical reactions where two or more reactants combine to make one product. Um, and these are, are not usually easy to predict, by the way. You kind of have to know what happens for these, at least at this level. Um, you know, the general form would be A plus B goes to C, or, you know, in, you know, an example would be hydrogen plus oxygen combining to make water. So that's a combination reaction. A decomposition reaction is just the opposite of a combination reaction one thing breaking apart into two or more uh, products. Um, and again, this one, unless you know, you know, or you're familiar with that specific reaction, you can't, usually you can't predict what the products are going to be. Um, an example of this would be the decomposition of ammonium dichromate. One compound breaking apart into two or more. Um, chromium three oxide, water, and nitrogen in this case. Now, now we start getting to the point where we can predict the products. Um, a single replacement, sometimes called a single displacement reaction, same thing, um, is when you have a single element by itself reacting with an ionic compound. So that, that's key right there. That's how you tell that a chemical reaction is single replacement. You have the reactants are one, an element by itself, and then two, uh, an ionic compound. It could be an acid, you know, something like that. And what happens is that element replaces the like element in the compound. What does that mean? It means that if the element that's by itself is a metal, as in this example it's sodium, um, it replaces the metal that's in the compound. So in this case the ionic compound is gold 3 nitrate. And so what happens in this single replacement reaction is that the metal replaces, you know, the metal, which is the element by itself, sodium, replaces the like element, the metal, that, the gold, in the ionic compound. And what we get out, in this case, is sodium nitrate and gold metal. So what happens here is um, sodium, when its elemental form has zero charge, what ha and basically what happens in these reactions is electrons get moved around from the element that's by itself to the element that's in the compound. In the compound here, gold has a plus three charge. It's an ionic compound. So what happens is the, the, the gold ion grabs um, one electron from each of three sodium atoms, gaining three electrons. Now it's neutral. It doesn't react anymore. It's all by itself. Sodium lost the, each sodium lost an electron, so now it's an ion, and it combines with a nitrate to make sodium nitrate. Um, now, not every single replacement reaction that you can write down will occur. Um, it, only, it will only happen, there will only will be a chemical reaction if the lone element is more what we call active than the element that's in the compound. We'll see that later, so don't worry about that right now. I just want to make sure that it's kind of in your, in your mind. So, for example, this is a single replacement reaction, potassium reacting with iron 3 bromide. So what you should, guys should do now is stop the video, see if you can um, predict the products, write them down, and then balance the equation. And then come on back. Welcome back. So what we do is we say, okay, figure out the products. We say, all right, potassium, we know, because it's in that table that I gave you guys back in the nomenclature section, that when potassium's in an ionic compound, it has a plus one charge. Um, so that means, you know, to, com to replace the iron, which is the like element in this compound, the potassium will have a plus one charge. We know that bromide, again, the same way, I gave it to you in that chart, when it's in an ionic compound, has a negative one charge. So when we combine potassium, the potassium ion and the bromide ion, we get potassium bromide, whose formula is KBr. So at that point, we can write down 
the, the, the two products, we can write down the unbalanced chemical reaction, potassium and iron 3-bromide, make potassium bromide, and then the element here, now it's neutral, it's just by itself, no charge, regular old iron. And then when we balance it, we get this. So go ahead and balance it, you guys, and make sure you guys get the same coefficients that I did. That's single replacement reactions. Now, double replacement or double displacement reactions, same thing, are when you have two ionic compounds. Um, they could, one of them could be um, an acid, um, but usually just two ionic compounds. And what happens in a double replacement or displacement reaction is you can think about it, and you should think about it, as the cations in each of the ionic compounds switching places. So in this reaction here, this double replacement reaction, this ionic compound, potassium phosphate, the cation is the potassium ion, K+. In this one, the cation is the iron 2 um, cation, Fe2+. So to predict the products, we take this cation, iron with a plus 2, combine it with this anion, the phosphate ion, balance the charges, and we get, in this case, um, iron 2 phosphate. Same thing with this cation. It goes with this anion. The ca this cation is potassium. This anion is the chloride ion. And when we combine those, we get potassium chloride. And then when we balance it, we get these numbers right here. Um, now, a double replacement reaction will only occur if both of the products are not aqueous. Um, that means that you form either a solid, a liquid, or a gas. It's one, at least one of the products. But we'll, we'll look at how to tell that later. So don't worry about that right now. But I just, again, I want you to, to have that qualification in your mind at this point. So as an example, calcium chloride and silver nitrate. We know this is, will be a double replacement reaction because these are both ionic compounds. That's how you tell. So what you guys should do is you should pause the video, see if you can predict the products, and then balance the equation. All right, welcome back. So first thing we do is figure out what the products are. Well, we know that calcium, when it's in an ionic compound, has a plus two charge. So we're gonna take this cation, combine it with this anion, nitrate. We know nitrate, from our table of polyatomic ions, has a negative one charge. When we balance these charges, we get the formula for one of the products, calcium nitrate, CaNO3, two. Likewise, when we take this cation, the silver ion, we know it has a plus one charge. And this anion, the chloride ion, and balance their charges, we get silver chloride, AgCl. All right, so now we know the two products. All that's left is to balance it. This is what I got. You guys should check and make sure you get the same thing. Okay, so there are other ways um, of classifying chemical reactions, and here are some of them. We'll run into another one in the next video, I think, or two videos to come. But one way is classifying a chemical reaction as a combustion reaction. And the way we're going to think about combustion reactions are as the reaction of a hydrocarbon with oxygen gas, that's um, elemental oxygen, O2, to form carbon dioxide and water. Um, a hydrocarbon, it just means um, a molecular compound, so um, all nonmetals, and it contains carbon, hydrogen, and it could have another element like maybe oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, some other nonmetal. Um, that's what a hydrocarbon is. Now, these reaction guys are really easy because they're always the same products unless if you have nitrogen or something else in there then it, there's a little twist to it that you'll see maybe in a little bit but for now if there's just carbon hydrogen oxygen in the hydrocarbon then the products are always carbon dioxide and water now one word about this guys this is what we call complete combustion the, whole, the entire hydrocarbon is combusted entirely into carbon dioxide and water now Combustion is a real common reaction. It happens in you know com internal combustion engines when we burn wood, paper, whatever, right? Through the, you know candles, you know something burns. That's combustion. Um, and most of the time, the combustion you guys see in everyday life is not complete combustion. It's a lot messier. Um, that's why we have problems with smog. And all. one reason we have problems with smog and all that is that um, during incomplete combustion, we get carbon monoxide, which is not good. Um, soot, which is just carbon and you know some other things, especially if there's something else in here like sulfur. But we're not going to worry about that. For us, complete combustion is the way to go. All right, so for an example, um, now you should be able to write a balanced equation for the combustion of, um, well, propane, well, whatever, you know, this is C3H6, this hydrocarbon. So again, stop the video, guys, see if you can write and balance that equation, and come on back when you do. All right, welcome back. 
So we know it's a hydrocarbon. Combustion means it reacts with O2. And we know products are carbon dioxide and water. All we have to do now is balance it. So when I balance it, I get this. I had to do that thing with the, the nine halves in front of here. But um, check and make sure you guys get, get the same numbers. Acid-base reactions are another way of categorizing or classifying chemical reactions, and this is, as the name implies, an acid reacting with a base. Um, you can th I think about these a lot of times as at least this type of acid-base reaction as a special case of a double replacement reaction where one of the ionic compounds is an acid and the other is a base. Now, what's a base? Um, at this point, and we're going to go past this later on, but at this point... Um, a base is a metal hydroxide. That means that it's a metal cation and the hydroxide polyatomic ion. And so if you think about this as a double replacement reaction, the cation in the acid is the H+, and it combines with the anion in the base, which is hydroxide OH-, and that always makes water. H plus plus OH- is H2O. And then here the cation is the metal, the sodium ion, the anion is everything after the hydrogen, which in this case is a chloride ion, and so we'll make sodium chloride. There's a saying, and it works for this type of acid-base reaction, and it's just kind of an easy way to remember it. Acid in the base makes salt and water, right? Or, yeah, salt, salt is, you know, an ionic compound. Um, so, um, basically, you predict the products kind of just like you do with um, double replacement reactions. So, here's another example, guys. So, go ahead and pause that video. See if you can figure out the products, balance the reaction, and come on back. Welcome back. So the cation here is H+, the anion here is OH-, when they combine they make water. Um, the cation here is aluminum with a plus 3, sulfate is SO4 with a 2-, minus. that makes aluminum sulfate, Al2SO43. Now that we have the um, products as well as reactants, balance it. and. That's what I got. Make sure you guys come up with the same coefficients. And that's all there is to it, guys.